I already spoke on Karis Home, but Cool J? Now this dude right here, and this is a Queens dude, a lot of people don't put him up there as far as top rappers, but this dude right here, he influenced a lot, he changed the game. A few, a few people changed the game. He changed the game. When I Need a Beat came out, his story, that right there, that's when everybody started using the big words and you know what I mean? And, and just like changed the cadence of the way Brothers was rhyming. When he's like, I said no more additions with the reach, L just came in like, box! <laughs> and then, boom, ta 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 One, You know, Rick Rubin joint, you know, Rick Rubin's killing the drums back then. But yeah, this right here, Bad, was a dope album. And this is in front of Andrew Jackson High School. Now, Jackson is a school, it's in Hollis. I'm from Southside, I went to Edison. But Jackson was a school that was half Southside and half Hollis. And back in them days, it wasn't, you know, a, you know. Good luck. Yeah, it was always fights between Southside and Hollis, from, from school all the way to the bus terminal in Jamaica Avenue. But LL, when he came out with this, like, oh, bad, bad, that, that fourth first and bad was, oh my goodness, never wearing no Levi's, battle me, why try? I treat you like a stepchild, so tell mommy bye-bye. He was killing that, slaughtering them seeds, and I'ma never get whipped. When I'm retired, I get worshipped like an old battleship. LL, I'm bad. Other rappers know when I enter the center, they be like, yo, yo, there you go. My paycheck is large. Mr. Bo got the charge. Oh, he was killing that shit. But this album was banging. Younger niggas pulling the triggers, bringing fame to their name and claim some corners. Crews without guns and corners. Chronic. Classic. Classic. Dre, I was always a fan of Dre production. And it's like, um, one thing about him is like, he always showed growth and development from the NWA days to when he went to the Chronic, because he went totally left from what he was doing to me. Because um, originally, he was more like, like Marley Marr, who was one of my favorite producers too. Marley Marr was killing the break beats as far as production. And you know, you have like three, four beats in there and chop something up. And you know, Marley Marr is the first dude to even chop a sample up on the record. Dre was doing the same thing with a West Coast style. He was having like four, you know, different break beats in there and things like that. But then he went to more instrumentation by the time he got here to the chronic and he was funked out, but he was killing it. And the funk always been the funk, <laughs> you know what I mean? But this got a lot of classics on here. It's like, oh man, Dre Day, Let Me Ride. Yeah, he killed Let Me Ride. And, that, that's one of the joints, because he still brought in a break beat and let the whole thing change, like on, on, on a hook when, when it breaks down. So, yeah, nothing but a G, they little ghetto boy. You know, this rat a tat tat. This is all classic. Boogie, you all like you know me. Shoot up your block to make you know me. You ain't ready yet. Slow down and recollect. Stay in the car. I'm stuff for law body set. Yo, I'm not who act for. Look, Paul, now I'm set. Hey. This one right here, oh come on, these another Queens group that uh they definitely changed the game too. Like I, I was speaking on this like not too long ago, because before Run DMC, it's like uh rap was a little bit different. Four Sucker MCs, rap was a little bit different. It was like, you know, the crews, like, you know, Cold Crush and you know, a lot of harmonizing, you know, everybody had their specialists. But when Suck MCs came out, when that beat just hit. And it was just that beat. It was just that don't 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 don't. Then when Ron came on, rocking, with no other music or nothing, and he just rocking. There was there wasn't even a hook in this record. There's no hook. He just rocking. He you know, like I was saying earlier, like he took it back. He's like two years ago. He taking he taking you back. Who the fuck is this? We got hip hop at a time, um, I ain't gonna keep it too long, but at a time, I recall, when Ronald Reagan first came into office, there used to be music programs in the schools. Like, he cut them programs. So, a lot of bands and groups that came before us, they learned how to play in school. You know, they could have learned how to play the piano, bass, guitar, whatever in school. You know, by the time I got there, he cut the program. So we didn't have none of that. So all we had was this. Or if you beatbox, 
or if you put words together, that's what we had to express ourselves, and that's what we did. And we, you know, we found me. I became a DJ by going to the park jams, and, and, and one particular park jam I went to, I seen Grandmaster Vic getting busy. I was like, oh, that's what I want to do. So I had to save up to get pieces. You know what I mean? And then, you know, and you know, lucky I had a brother that used to hustle. And he 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 seen what I was trying to do. He said, "I got something for you." He 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 actually bought me my first real set that I got. Um, he told me to stick with that. You know that that's the difference. He told me, "Don't do what I do. You stick with that." And that's what I did.